My AP government class, I fell asleep every day because the <laughs> teacher bored us all to death. Yeah. I mean, after a while, you just kind of give up yeah, on the scantrons. You get, I mean, I basically barely passed my mm -hmm. government class because I gave up on scantrons. You just like, lose interest in it. It's hard because I don't like learning. Overutilizing, overanalyzing information that's that's not accurate. It's almost like if you were to look at, try to put together a jigsaw puzzle, but you never saw the picture on the outside of the box. The various pieces of the puzzle would not make much sense to you. And yet, that's what we do to kids all the time. We give them activities, but we never give them the big picture of why these activities are important or where, where they're leading. Because to me, that's the goal, is to make them self-sufficient, sustained learners. What I would hear is just marvelous research um, coming from some of the top scientists in the country. Um, but they were speaking to an audience of teachers and at the end of the presentation, the teachers would typically raise their hand, someone in the back, and say, so how can I use this knowledge in my classroom? And the researcher would respond, well, that I don't know. You know, that's not my field. You know, I, I don't know how to translate that for you. I was seeing connections. I wanted to stand up and answer that teacher. Consider this. It's just best practices woven together. So it's all of those things that are thrown at you, but in this tight condensed package that makes sense. Brain targeted teaching is not a curriculum. It's not a marketed product. It's a teaching framework. It's a model of best practices um, informed by um, research from brain science. Before I start today's lesson, I want to make that brain map of the five ways erosion happens. We made this map last week, and our goal today is to find out which ones affect the Grand Canyon. What are five of the ways? Go ahead, Audrey. I need you to go fast. This is so important to set your brain up for this lesson. If you miss the brain map, you're going to be lost. If you don't know the goal, how do you know when you're done? What, what do you make your predictions based on? How, how do you know? You already know from previous. Yes! Yes! Your prior knowledge. That is so critical. Because if you can connect what you already know, let's see here, I'm doing it again. Prior knowledge is back here. No, it's not. <laughs> prior knowledge is through your entire brain. If you can connect what's out here to what's in here, one of the most effective ways to learn. That's a beautiful thing. There's a neuroscientific reason why I'm doing it. And I tell the students that. And I tell them the science behind why. And, you know, they see me as the fun teacher, but my students leave knowing some really sound scientific findings, neurological findings, and some of this, the words and the speech that they use and the understanding they have is really profound. I really want to work on you being able to ask yourself questions. And the easiest way to do it is just picture me sitting there talking with you. What would Mettler say to me? Do you remember the word pan? Pan-Slavic? All I remember is pan-African. Pan-African? What was pan-Africanism? Tell me about it. I remember it like that. You just remember the word? Yeah. This is how you remember the word pan. If I have a pan and I put a whole bunch of stuff in it, mm -hmm. does it touch each other? Or does it all stay separated? Separated. It does? In a pan? When you cook, you keep oh, in no, one yeah. pan? No. Does it all mix up or is it separate? Mix up. Mix up. Pan-Africanism, pan-Slavic, pan-anything in social studies is where you put a whole bunch of stuff together and it unifies for a powerful force. When I say trap jail, if you thought your game went well, put a one up. If you thought it went okay, put a two. And if you thought it didn't go well, put a three. The goofier, the better. Because if we're silly and having fun, what's happening in your brain? What that? What's that chemical? Serotonin, dopamine. Yeah, so the goofier the better. 
That's, that's great. You really kind of like, fit, you have to think really a lot. And I like it a lot. And it's, I, I really like the way he teaches. You use all these different things and all, the, all these different parts in your brain to think about problems and, and projects. I like it a lot because I get to talk about like new things that are going on and we get to go into depth about it and that's like the kind of stuff that I like to do and it's more interesting and it's actually fun to come into the class because it's not like a regular class. You got it! See you guys, when you talk it out, that's why I want you guys working with your partners to talk it out. He like keeps us alive. Okay, it's not about the final product, it's the process. It's the process of what we're doing. Anyone not get a brain? That's what these brains are remind you of. You're creating new learning. So when you're learning, you're growing your brain. You're creating myelin, you're creating new dendrites. So when you change your brain, you can change your life too. And we do forget, I forget, my students remind me all the time, you know, and I hope you do. When I, you catch me saying I can't, or I'm not good at, or, and, Remind me, remind me, I need reminded too. We tell ourselves, I can't. I'm not a good writer. Oh, I, I'm terrible at math. How many people say that? Stop telling yourself that. Stop telling yourself that. Maybe right now, you don't have the skills, but tell yourself, I can get better at math. I can get better at math. I can work at math. I can work harder at this. I can change my brain. I can change my brain. You can, guys. We now know that you can change your brain. You can. We've known it since 1996. You can change your brain. Let's practice. I can change my brain. I can, I can change, change my brain. brain. Oh, beautiful. I see them spark in their eye and the, the excitement come back into education again. And they're learning, you know, and they're inspired. And, and when I saw that shift in them and they saw the purposefulness behind what I do, and it's not just there to grab their attention. It's not just edutainment that I've heard that term. There's a reason for everything I do. What What is this very badly drawn, um, or poorly drawn? What is this, guys? Neuron. Neuron! Beautiful, Taylor. A neuron. This is a neuron. What is a neuron? Describe further. What is a neuron? What is it? Not just Taylor, but anybody. What is a neuron? Is it your nerve system? There, see, you didn't even need to be here, sweetheart. It's your nervous system. It's not just our brains, but our entire bodies, our whole nervous system. I find the neurological thing that she was talking about very interesting, and how it, like the dopamine affects everything, and how that makes you happy, and what stuff makes you tick, and all that. I find that very fascinating. I never even. <laughs> about that but now I do it.